From 2019 to 2021, I suffered from really bad gas. No, stop, stop. Just, mm -mm -mm. I'm not talking about that kind of gas. I'm not even talking about car gas. I'm talking about gear acquisition syndrome. I bought over 10 cameras, tons of different lenses, went kind of crazy, trying constantly to find what was the best of the best. And I'm gonna share with you seven things that I learned to help you not make the same mistakes that I did. The first thing I learned, don't get sold on the hype. Camera companies wanna sell cameras, shock. Wow, who would have thought? They'll use brand ambassadors, advertisements, so many different tools to really hype people up about their latest and greatest camera. They want you to think that it's the best thing ever and you can't live without it. I will never forget all the hype around the Canon R5 with people like Peter McKinnon. Is it as good as it seems? Yes, 100%. What brand makes a camera that like cannibalizes everything else they sell? <laughs> I feel like I am dreaming. It is too good to be true. And then it had a ton of issues, overheating, cropping, limitations. It turned out not to be the best thing ever and be full of problems. And I remember the huge amount of letdown that so many people had when the R5 was not the end all be all camera. That experience along with many other cameras that I used that were not the end all be all, had their own limitations, really taught me don't buy into the hype. Number two, bigger and more expensive is not always better. Rather it's the RED, the ARRI, a Canon cinema camera, a Sony cinema camera, any cinema camera on the market. We all want those as amateur professional filmmakers to somehow make us feel more legit or like we've made it or like we're a real filmmaker. And the truth is no camera is gonna kind of fill that, that void of imposter syndrome or wondering if we've made it or you know make us feel more legit or even necessarily make us look more legit to a lot of clients. What it is gonna do for you though is add a lot of weight, a lot of time to the setup. Sometimes there's gonna be a long boot time with some of these cameras and it's gonna be a lot heavier and harder on your body. So that's not to say that there's not a place for cinema cameras and that they might be the right choice for you and your productions, but it is to say that bigger is not always better and there are definitely advantages to the smaller, lighter, and less expensive cameras. The third thing that I learned is that every camera has compromises. Frame rates, codecs, low light, size, weight, ergonomics, ports, plugins, lens options. No matter what camera you get, there's gonna be some kind of compromise with it. Thinking about the workflow and the style that fits you best versus what camera has the latest and coolest specs is really gonna help you to make better buying decisions and you may realize you don't even need a new camera. And number four goes right along with number three and that is don't try and keep up with the Joneses. There's always gonna be a new camera around the corner or a new lens or a new light or something. There's always gonna be something new and flashy with amazing specs that's just gonna blow your mind right around the corner because as we talked about, camera companies want to sell cameras. And so they're trying to make something new that catches your eye, that's gonna be really exciting, but we may not need that. That may not even make a difference to our workflow. Don't be always running to the newest camera, buying the newest camera, and hoping that that's going to revolutionize your filmmaking, because it won't. Tip number five is most people are not gonna care what camera you have. Rather, you're making short films and trying to attract actors and a crew, or you're trying to land client gigs. Nobody really cares or knows that much about all the cameras on the market, except us complete geeks and nerds. I've shot tons of projects and made tens of thousands of dollars with the Panasonic GH3 and GH5 before I got the Pocket 4K, or the FX9 or the FX3 or any of these crazy cameras over the last few years. Clients didn't ask questions because they'd seen my work, they knew it was good, and they just trusted that I was gonna use the tools to get the job done that needed to be done. So if you're not making money and you're not getting clients, buying that fancy new camera is not gonna suddenly 
make people flock to you. Tip number six is new gear is not going to revolutionize your filmmaking. I'm not gonna say that certain gear is not gonna be better for some projects than others, like the FX3, amazing at low light, beautiful full frame sensor, 10-bit 422, absolutely love this camera that I'm shooting on right now. But there's nothing in the world to say that like with this shot, with all of its controlled lighting, that I couldn't get essentially the same shot on any number of less expensive cameras. And in fact, many of my past YouTube videos have been shot on the GH5 or A6600. When I look back at my filmmaking, I'm not thinking, wow, I shot that on the GH5, it looks amazing. Or wow, I shot that on the Pocket 4K, that looks amazing. Or even, wow, I shot that on the FX9, that looks amazing. I'm thinking about, my storytelling, what was good, what was bad, what was going on on screen, did I capture the right emotion? You could probably hand me just about any modern camera with any given script, and I could still tell roughly the same story with any given camera. It won't revolutionize your filmmaking to get a new camera. And tip number seven, camera value depreciates very, very quickly. As we talked about, camera companies are always pumping out new cameras. And think of a camera, something like uh, a car. As soon as you drive that new car off the lot, it's lost value. So really be thinking about your camera purchases not as investments, but as expenditures. And not constantly buying and buying and buying is really gonna help you. None of the cameras that I bought and sold, I sold for as much as I bought them for. All of them lost value. I lost money from those cameras. If I had just kept those cameras instead of selling them, chasing after the camera that was gonna make me feel like a filmmaker, I would have saved a whole ton of money. All that said, I love cameras. I love gear, I love tech, I love watching videos about it. I love making videos about it. I just, I love talking about it with my friends in the nerd space. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But it is really important to realize that you don't have to constantly be buying and chasing after the latest and greatest camera to make the kind of content you want. So I hope that this was helpful to you guys. Maybe it'll help you kind of back off that gas, eat a few less beans, Wink, aha, so funny. But anyway, I'll catch all of you guys very soon.